Magic the Gathering is a card game that can be really expensive, especially if you want to play with some of the more powerful cards or some of the older versions of cards or the more rare versions of cards. However, it can also be incredibly cheap. In fact, there's entire services, websites, and channels devoted entirely to playing this game on a budget, as well as maximizing how much fun you can have for your dollar, which is great. That is not at all what we're doing today. Today, I've set out to create a deck that is almost entirely and completely a waste of your money. And while I decided this, I have also a clarification to make. This is not just meant to be the most expensive deck ever. That's not quite the spirit we're going for. No, if we're going to spend money on these cards, it needs to be a waste of money. So with that in mind, the format I've chosen for this deck is... Popper. You know, the 60 card format where you only play with commons and the top tier one decks are only ranged from 50 to $100. Yeah. That Popper. See, the reason I've chosen Popper is that Popper is, at its core, essentially the exact opposite of what we're trying to do here today. And I think that's beautiful. So this is a Popper deck that seeks to be a complete waste of your money, as some, and if not all, of the cards in the deck have better or equivalent cheaper versions of these cards readily available within Popper. And there's just so many reasons why every one of these cards is just a bad decision. I'll show you a few examples in a little bit. But first, let's talk a little bit more about the deck. This is a Selesnia, or green-white, tempo deck. We build around a few small creatures and are just playing to get some general value in the early game. Then we try to finish our opponent off with some combat buffs and some hard to block creatures. But the card choices for this deck are, for the most part, cards you really have no reason to be playing or even own in a lot of cases, and they likely have a better or cheaper version readily available. For example, as a defensive card, we play Heavy Fog, but why play Heavy Fog when Deepwood is literally the exact same card with the exact same wording for roughly about 30 cents as opposed to Heavy Fog's roughly about $20. And how about the two unlimited Savannah Lions that we're running? I mean, these things go for about $275 a piece. Or you could just get the most recent version for 20 cents. Or instead of playing Forest Bears, you can play Ashcoat Bears, a strict upgrade at a fraction of the price. But what is likely the most egregious example of this deck being a complete waste of your money is actually our basic land selection. So, as some of you will probably have guessed by now, we are of course using the Guru lands. These lands were given as a weird reward that could be redeemed via a point system by a very specific small weird program of magic educators back in the 1990s. Now these things are incredibly rare, and each Guru basic land, each individual one, can range from five to six hundred dollars for a basic land. You know, the cards that Wizards of the Coast print so much of, they're meant to be almost functionally free for the average player. <laughs> yeah, that's the bulk of the cost of our deck. So I guess you could say the deck is working pretty well. So have you ever felt like playing a popper deck that is worth Give or take $11,000, that is also considerably worse than a $60 tier one deck. Yeah, me neither. But now the deck exists. If you want to check it out, click the link in the description. This was very stupid. Thank you very much for watching and have yourself a very nice day.